welcome to another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Rachel Arnett. Hello, hello. And today, as we're starting the new year, yes, welcome to 2018, we're going to review... <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it, yeah, right. Oh, good, got it there. Uh, we are going to review and celebrate the shows that we loved in the fall, some of which we were even surprised how much we mm -hmm. loved, and some that were a little disappointing, and maybe somewhat surprising that that happened mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. Yep. So we're going to go forward, and we're going to start with some shows that we loved, because you got to start on a good note to start the new year off. Absolutely. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to share this one show that yeah. I think if I have one more person who tells me, they love this show, it only gets better. Guess what? This is us. Which you so predicted. You totally yes. predicted it. There, there's no question. This show is such a hit. It's like reading a book, a really long, long, long <laughs> novel. Like the Outlander series, it just gets bigger and bigger as you go. And But the thing is, this show, at the end of every chapter or episode... Mm -hmm draws me in. I can't wait for the next week. They've kind of mastered the hook and the cliffhanger in a way that you're not yes. irritated by it. You're not like, oh, let me know already. They've, like, they've managed that fine line really well. And because it's not, it's not an all right already, the cliffhangers are always something new. Yeah. They're not giving you the same cliffhanger repeatedly over and over and over. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're giving you a whole new cliffhanger based on what you've already seen. Mm -hmm. It's not a cliffhanger that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It's a cliffhanger that says, oh, so now we're gonna learn that new piece. Yeah. And it's still all about, in many ways, the death of the father in the family, Jack Pearson. Mm -hmm. And we're waiting to find out exactly how he died. We know there's a fire mm -hmm. involved. We've known that for a while now. We even knew that, I believe, at the end of the last year, last season. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting closer and closer, and I know that the cast members have been on interviews all over the place, and they've said, yeah, we're going to find this out in 2018. Supposedly this spring, we're going to find out exactly. exactly what happened. And I think it'll be interesting to see kind of where the show goes from there, because a lot of series that focused around one central mystery yes. struggled a little bit. You know, at Desperate Housewives, when they revealed what happened to the narrator, it kind of fell off, and we're like, okay, now we know. Thanks. Have a good day. But I don't see that right, happening right. with the show because it's still also about the children and the mother, and we focused it on those lives as well. And I think they were very smart because I think the last three episodes of the fall season focused specifically on the children. Um, each of the last three episodes was called number one, number two, and number mm -hmm. three, yep. truly focusing on the children and you didn't see so much about Jack and how Jack died or anything it was about them their lives now and how it was reflections of what they did as as they grew up and I thought the analogy to who walked in which order was beautiful each episode started for those of you who haven't seen them yet and it's definitely worth seeing even if we're talking about it started with taking film footage of the one-year-old babies mm -hmm. as they each take their first steps. Number one, number two, and number three, who become the big three in the family, yep. the, the twins and Randall. Mm -hmm. And let's see where it takes us now because the focus really developed the characters and each episode gave us surprises. Mm -hmm. Not a single piece of the story was a cliche. No, and it was all very realistic, realistic drama, I guess, you know, compared to some shows where the whole time you're sitting there going, oh, another kidnapping or another, you know, whatever right. it may be. But this is, yeah, they're hitting on real issues, yeah. real issues. And I won't go too far into it because I don't want to spoil it. But if you haven't started This Is Us or you haven't started this season, go on demand and get the season going. Mm -hmm. It's there. Stream it. Uh, the network streams it and on demand streams it. So go for it. It's worth your time. Mm -hmm. And now, Rachel, what was one of your favorites from this past season? I can't, I don't think I can go a day or two without talking about Crazy Ex Girlfriend. And I know I've talked about it before, but this season, 
is really the season that the creators of the show have been waiting to write. Now, this is on Hulu? No, well, it's on Hulu, but it's originally from the CW. Okay. Which so. is why, you know, I was kind of surprised initially that I really enjoyed it because my impression of the CW hasn't always been terribly positive. Well, it's like, te in, in my mind, and I'm a little bit older <laughs> than you are for sure, I always thought of it as Teeny Bopper TV, but they're getting more and more into the quality drama. I, I've seen a lot more of that coming from CW. Absolutely. So and, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, yeah. go for it. And so this season, I, I don't want to give a lot away, but they're... Kind of, they're exploring a lot more of the concept of crazy and how the main character really sees the world and whether she's really the hero we've been seeing her as or maybe there is a bit more anti-hero to her and a bit more delusion than we all would have liked. Because we're all rooting okay. for her the whole time, even though we're fully aware that some of her behavior is very problematic and troublesome. <laughs> but this season, they're really allowing us to kind of think about Things like mental illness and things like what you do when you've built your life around a relationship and that relationship disintegrates and what that means for the people in your life even that may be mutual friends. And I know for me, I saw this initially as something that, you know, would be a comedy. And, and it is. You know, in many it, ways, it's a, it, it's a dark comedy. But the more that they're getting into it, the more I see the drama in it. Mm -hmm as they explore things like the mental health issues. Absolutely. But not in a way that I'm like, oh, this is dragging me down. No, it's interesting. No. Um, all right, I'm going to go on to another show that I actually started off wondering about and then was really happy to see how it developed over mm -hmm. the season because I had felt some ups and downs. And that's the new show called The Good Doctor. I can totally see that. Yep. Um, the show, uh, which follows Freddie Highmore, who plays Dr. Sean Murphy, as an autistic young man who is a doctor. And the complications that his autism brings to his residency. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this, they do seem realistic. Um, one of the things I looked for in the show was positives and I felt there was a lot of very tragic drama in several of the earlier episodes this yeah. season. Um, I left the show feeling, oh, wow, I, I think I need to go get an ice cream cone because yeah. I was feeling so yeah. down at the end. Yeah. And the show was very high quality, but it was emotionally exhausting. It was draining yes, sometimes. Yes, draining. And, and the acting was amazing. The actor Richard Schiff plays uh, the father figure doctor mm -hmm. who has known Sean since he was younger, since he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, so as we learn things, you know, we saw that, saw that there was a lot of tragedy in Sean's life that led him to the place where he is now. However, what I was really thrilled to see was I guess the last three episodes this season because I kept giving it a try. I was dedicated to really wanting the show to succeed and they delivered. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we started seeing some upbeat endings. Mm -hmm. We started seeing more success for the character, more success for the people around him, um, more positive interactions some touches of humor even, mm -hmm. which in this show, which is a hospital drama that is, gets very close up and personal in the surgical mm -hmm. it can be center. very bleak too. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, without question, I was seeing bleak and I was seeing scary. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily like seeing someone surgically operated on yeah. up close. Um, <laughs> Not a fan. I have to admit, this happened more than once mm -hmm. on occasion. But the stories became more layered, more developed, and more well-rounded. And by the end, I saw excitement. And the fall season ended with a huge cliffhanger. So if you haven't seen it, or like me, you, you were tempted to leave it earlier, go back. You won't be disappointed. The character develops so much more. Mm -hmm. um, the people around the character develop much more and become more accepting. 
and some not so much. So mm -hmm. we really see the whole gamut, the whole gamut. And I like that one of the things I like about the show is it wasn't automatically he comes in and everyone says he's amazing and he saves the day that there no, were that's true. you know more layers. And I, you know, I do think it showed a learning curve and a realistic approach, but I do agree with you that sometimes it was like, all right, but I, where's my escapism? Where did that go? Life is hard already. I don't need my TV show to be hard too. To be hard too, right. <laughs> and, you know, and as a parent, I'll be honest, as a parent of someone who is in the special needs community, I want some moments of success yes, absolutely. intermingled with this. And they do start delivering those. And in quite dramatic ways mm -hmm. and exciting ways. And yet they don't leave the realm of realism. Mm -hmm. They don't leave that. And I think it's worth your watching. Um, let's go to one more for you. And then we're okay. going to switch to a couple that we hope let's would improve. See. Should I do a new show or a show that's on its 30th season? That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to give a brief shout out to MTV's The Challenge, which as a grown woman, I should no longer be watching, but continues to just get, grab my attention at every episode. The, the incredibly ridiculous yes. drama and the physical st street feats. Thank you, MTV, for continuing to produce the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but I really want to, really, really, really want to talk about Wisdom of the Crowd. Okay. Which I was determined to dislike. I was. Really? Because I struggle with shows involving technology when there's no real grasp of what technology actually is or they're making up names or hacking is just pressing a button, a couple of buttons like in the movie Hackers where it, was, it looked like a video game and not hacking at all. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> and they've managed to somehow take what's really technical and kind of seamlessly interweave it so that that part to, you know, to the best of my knowledge, is much more accurate, but it's still character-based as well. And okay. Jeremy Pivens is so good on the show, and I really didn't think I was going to like him on the show because I'm so used to him as Ari Gold, and he was so fantastic in Entourage. And every week, I cannot wait to watch the show. Well, first of all, I loved him also on yeah. Entourage, and I also loved him on Selfridges, mm -hmm. on PBS. I really wasn't sure how believable he would be about yeah. this passionate parent. Because mm -hmm. it's a not a role that he would typically be, I would consider him for. In, in a tragic situation. Yeah. And instead, he took this role and he owned it and he yeah. just ran the show. Yep. I agree. I agree with you. And, and the supporting cast is phenomenal. It, it's, it, well, it's an all-star cast. Yeah. And if you haven't seen Wisdom of the Crowd, give it a try. This is a show we want to see continuing. Please, please watch it. Really okay, you heard her plea. You heard her plea. <laughs> please watch it. And now I'm going to switch. I hate doing this because I love my TV. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. <laughs> but there was one show that I really wanted to succeed and I thought would. And young Sheldon, I'm just not loving this wonderful spin-off from the Big Bang Theory and young Ian Armitage is a wonderful young actor I give him credit absolutely and his performance is wonderful I just don't feel like the show is really filling in what I kind of hoped it would in relation to the character we see mm -hmm. in the Big Bang Theory. And I think maybe part of this problem is that the Big Bang Theory is still running high and mighty. Yeah. It is so good and such a success. And part of it is Jim Parsons owns this role. It's very, very hard to even be engaged by a different Sheldon. I'm, I'm just not feeling it enough, mm -hmm. despite the quality. And it's not what I would say is bad writing. I don't think it's any of that. I just don't think it's coming at the right time. I would almost want to see a show like this after Big Bang Theory is off the air. I agree. I think it's hard when you can directly compare the two characters and, and look at it and say they're just not the same. The, ton you know, the tonal quality, the mannerisms, you can see where they're going. But it just can't directly match up because it's two different actors. It's two different actors. And some of our earlier 
times in previous seasons with Sheldon, we've seen a different Sheldon than I think is being reflected in young Sheldon. So I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't see the gelling happening. Mm -hmm. There's a little um, bit of dis disconnect between the two. Yes, yeah. yes. And because I love the Big Bang Theory so much, in fact, it's on my list of the ones you have to keep watching. I know it's been on a number of years. It doesn't get worse. It only gets better. I don't know how they do that. I don't know how this show does not get tired. It gets more engaging uh -huh. with every episode and more funny. And I, I, very few things I watch on TV do I laugh out loud. Mm -hmm. I laugh out loud even if I'm alone. My cats are like, what is she doing? <laughs> Crazy lady's laughing again. Uh, this show does not cease to continue to be fabulous. And I think by comparison, it was really hard for young Sheldon. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe if they had waited a little bit, I'll give it some more tries, but yeah. it's, it's not winning me yet. It's yeah. not winning me. It's hard to fill shoes that still have feet in them. <laughs> you know? Oh, I love that. Yeah, you're you. right, right, right. Trademark. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> a Rachel Arnett original, hard to fill shoes that have feet in them. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. I feel like the context might be necessary for <laughs> yeah, that really. one, <laughs> Okay, now you had some couple of things that you weren't thrilled with this past season. Yeah. I am struggling so hard to keep loving The Walking Dead. I loved it. I was that person who had right. to be there to watch it as it was happening because I couldn't go on any social media after it. And it just feels like, for one, a lot of the fervor has died down because I think a lot of people are feeling like I am, okay. where I haven't really been able to connect with it anymore. And it got to the point where initially it was this incredible drama about you know one main character and his journey. And I think it's one of the issues when you have such a huge ensemble cast and they all have storylines mm -hmm. that eventually you get lost. And some characters that you love will disappear for almost two seasons and they're there in the background but you don't really get to involve them and it just feels like the plot has been plotting along and they haven't really gotten to anything that's new or fresh that makes sense they've in, they've added new elements but they all just seem to kind of come out of nowhere and and to be fair it's based off of a comic series so a lot of it is coming in from the comic series but they've changed timelines and killed characters that didn't die in the comics and added new ones and it just doesn't seem to really work for me in the way that it used to. I think the novelty of it too originally I think it was uh, such a novel show um, and really creative and new and fresh. Yeah. I think that's worn off. Yeah you can't just have a couple zombies pop out now and have us go oh no because we're used to that. <laughs> like, it's a show it's, with zombies it, we get it. Yeah I, and <laughs> The, the fear factor, yeah. I think, has been reduced. Absolutely. When they were first, when the show first started and we saw them mm -hmm. first learning to survive in this new world, right. that was so intense consistently because they didn't know what kind of things to look out for. Now, every time they go in a new area, they do a full sweep. So it's like the chance of a zombie jumping out and scaring you is reduced just by the simple fact that they are experienced now in this world. Right, right. And the ways that they try to make it fresh, I think, unfortunately, aren't really working for me and a lot of other viewers. And, and I think when you do pull characters out and then bring them back so much later, um, the connection to the character is sometimes weakened. Mm-hmm. Or I think it is weakened. I, I'll be honest. I don't think it's sometimes. I think it does get significantly weakened because you've given up on that attachment. Mm -hmm. And, and they've, all, they've always done a really good job, I think, of focusing on the inhumanity of every human and the changes that characters have to go, to go through. But I think it's getting to the point where, like, yeah, we get it. Like, all human beings can be really awful people. Can we have one? Can we have one character that they don't, try so hard to show us that duality right. of humanity. That, that's, you know, that's the part that's getting a little hard for me as well as characters that you loved, love, love, love. You're like, oh, now they're kind of a heel too? Boo. Oh, I, I, hear, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. Um, before we run out of time and we may be able to get back to one or two more shows mm -hmm. that we love, I do want to give you one show that I want to make sure you watch. Okay. So I'm going to convince you in our oh, wow. segment about convincing. I want, because it's coming back. It's coming back. I'm so excited. It's coming back because I didn't think it would. The crown is coming back. 
Oh, it is? The Crown is coming oh, back. Yeah, I've I haven't seen, seen it all, but I've heard amazing things I've about it. I've seen ads. The Crown is coming back, and oh my God, just everything about this show, about Elizabeth II, uh, from her young life, and now we're in her young life as queen, mm. is so well done. It's so well done, and it did win Emmys. It was recognized because it was that well done. And you know, I thought it was one season, and it was that was it. I thought it was like a mini series. Mm -hmm. But they're talking about it coming back, and coupled with that, I am also very. I think I have a thing for the royals. I must because <laughs> Victoria is coming back to okay. PBS. That's another one that I haven't seen that I kept hearing really good things about. And and that also was outstanding. Um, Follow the royals. Okay. The fake ones on TV. <laughs> the, 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 the ones that are patterned are docudrama versions okay. because they're great. The other royals, wishing them all well and happy wedding coming up too. So that'll be exciting <laughs> for me as, I guess, someone who's a fan of them. But the, I love the history mm -hmm. involved with both of these queens because they're both exceptional for their longevity mm -hmm. and their passion for country and their people. And I think maybe that's why they're so engaging and the shows made around them have been really engaging as well. Mm. Okay, so now you got to convince me. <laughs> so, so interestingly enough, uh -oh. um, I also would love for you to watch a show about queens, but a very different kind. <laughs> I would really love it if everybody would watch RuPaul's Drag Race, which if you don't know is a <laughs> competition drag show where we get to watch drag queens do their thing in the most glorious way possible. And they also touch on a lot of social issues. They've had really deep discussions about mm -hmm. anorexia in the entertainment world, about bullying and multiculturalism and racism in the entertainment world. And, but at the end of the day, it's pure genius and escapism. And you sit there and you're watching it and you're just going, is anyone in the world more talented than, oh. the, than them? No, and I've, the I've, had, no. <laughs> I've actually glimpsed it a little okay. bit, but it's always been on at a time that oh. I just have way too much other stuff oh. in my life. Make time. Make time. Don't cook dinner. Order <laughs> food every Tuesday. They're coming out with All Stars 3 now, and now it's on VH1. It's not on Logo anymore. So a lot of more people have access to it. Oh, so it's on VH1, yeah. and we know RuPaul is an incredible talent. So... <laughs> King and queen of my life. King, I was going to say, <laughs> either he or she is wonderful yep. in whatever way. So I will do that. I yes. will watch it. And because it's all stars, it's all fan favorites that are coming back. Okay, so when you're thinking about what you should watch, think the word queen and just go from there. <laughs> no matter queen. where you go, you'll be in good shape. Um, They're going to end up watching The Nanny because she's from Flushing. <laughs> 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 That's okay, though. It's another good show. All right, I'm going to do a funny plug, but it's the truth, because you said something about a show that's 30 years old. So I'm going to end on truly one of my favorite, 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 favorite shows. Mm -hmm. I cannot go without my Jeopardy. So good, always. You know, there are things that get old, and I have to admit some of the game shows that are still on, particularly in the morning, I'm kind of over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, 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 they run out of steam. Um, and unless you're in the studio audience, in my personal opinion, some of them get far less engaging at this point. They shall remain nameless. I'm being very diplomatic at the moment. Um, very. Very diplomatic, yeah. It's the queens, you know, you're working on You were working on the queen thing, <laughs> diplomacy, right? But I have to tell you, Jeopardy, I'll tell you why I love it. Why it's still, I love it, I have to see it, I DVR it, I, I don't miss an episode. I truly don't, even if I go away, I'll catch up if I'm away two weeks, I'll mm -hmm. come back and I'll watch them a couple of shows a night because those shows questions still find a way to continue incorporating history mm -hmm. and pop culture and current events and just people in general and geography and every subject and they still have the most remarkable writing team because those questions never seem to get old. They, they're... Yeah. And they're mixed with funny mm -hmm. and Every time serious. Alex Trebek has to read like a contemporary slang word, it cracks me up because he sounds so stilted oh. with his professional demeanor thing. Ain't she? Or, or I love when he sings one because <laughs> even Alex Trebek, in all his years and his incredible respect, 
will do things like sing something out or try to fake yeah. an accent. Only a host who knows what they're doing and yeah. has a full grasp of Absolutely. everything could pull that <laughs> off and pull that off for, what is it, 30 five years or something like that now? Long, or Longer than I've been alive. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, now I'm really, that's scary because <laughs> I remember the first season when he brought it back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I actually remember the original Jeopardy, so. I didn't know that there was another one. Oh, no. Okay. And this is what happens when your co-host is a, uh, what is it, Generation X or a Millennial? Which one are you? Somewhere you're, in the middle. They yeah, can't decide. They can't decide. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I won't assign you. <laughs> I won't label. I identify as me. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, I would just like to say we've had a wonderful time welcoming you all to 2018. Even though for us, we're starting it a little early. <laughs> Believe me, when we see this, we'll be celebrating it right along with you. Absolutely. And watch your TV. Enjoy shows of this season. And support them because these shows will only stay on if you keep watching them. And we'll keep sharing them with you. Exactly. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. And welcome from Carolyn Talks Television. Yay! <laughs>